Good morning, preschoolers. My name is Mrs. Lisa, and I'm so glad you could join us today. We have a great Bible story that we're going to learn about a, an amazing way that God rescued Daniel from a bunch of scary lions. So, if you've gotten your mail this week, you should have received a little brown paper bag and either a yellow or an orange um, three by five card in the mail. And I want you to use these to make a lion puppet because we're learning about how God rescued Daniel from lions so you can make your own lion. What you can do is cut out a main shape from the card and draw a lion face on this square with the mouth right here so that you can wind up with a scary lion puppet. Roar! Can you make a big loud roar with me? Roar! So if you haven't had a chance to make your puppet yet, go ahead and take a break and make your puppet now and then you can use it with me while we tell the story. But first, before we get into the story, I wanna review our key verse and our key song. So our key verse is from 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 through 18, and this is how it goes. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. Let's say that again, and you try to say the words with me while I say them, okay? Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. Very good. And our key song is called, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. We've been learning about how Jesus is our friend and he loves to talk to us in prayer, take away all our worries and fears and give us peace. That's what our song is about. So let's sing it together. Are you ready? What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. So we've been really enjoying learning about prayer the last couple weeks, and we're going to see in our story today how Daniel loved to pray to God. So before we start today's story, we're going to review the last couple weeks worth of stories that we've learned. We know that God's people were living in Babylon. And so the kings of Babylon were not people who knew who God was, and they didn't love him or believe in him at first. So our first story was about King Nebuchadnezzar and three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three friends refused to bow down and worship idols. They said they would only worship the one true God. Because of that, they were thrown in a fiery furnace, but God saved them from the fiery furnace, and they, they did not die. And King Nebuchadnezzar and all the people of Babylon learned that God can save people. He is the one true God. Then we learned last week how King Nebuchadnezzar forgot that lesson. And King Nebuchadnezzar thought that he was the greatest, that he was the best king there was. He was a great king. He was like a tree. He provided for so many people, like a tree provides for animals. But he had to learn that he was not the greatest, that everything he had came from God. God is the greatest king. Jesus is our perfect king forever. So God made King Nebuchadnezzar live like an animal. He ate grass like a cow. He had long fingernails like um, bird's claws. And eventually he looked up to heaven and he realized that God is the greatest. Well, in today's story, we have a new king of Babylon. His name was King Darius. And King Darius did not know the stories that um, King Nebuchadnezzar had learned about how great God is, and how he is the only one that we should worship. And um, so we're gonna, we're gonna see what King Darius had to learn this week. Now we remember Daniel. Daniel loved God. He loved to talk to God. In fact, he prayed to God three times every day. Can you count to three with me? One, two, three. And we even have a little praying picture here that I can, oops, I can put out for you to remember that Daniel loved to pray to God. And there were a bunch of other people in the kingdom who were helpers to King Darius because King Darius needed a lot of people to help him and advise him and tell him what he should do. And because Daniel loved God, God blessed Daniel and made Daniel wiser and better than any of the other kings. Um, helpers that the king had. So King Darius was going to give Daniel a very important job. 
<clears throat> now, how do you think the rest of the helpers felt? They were jealous. They were maybe a little bit angry. Um, and so they decided we are going to get Daniel in trouble. And so they watched Daniel. Can you point to your eyes? They used their eyes to watch Daniel and they said, let's see if we can find something that Daniel does wrong. So they tried to see if Daniel would lie. They tried to see if Daniel would steal. They tried to see if Daniel would be mean to somebody. They tried to see if Daniel would break the law and do something that the king had said was wrong. And they watched Daniel and they watched Daniel. And do you think that Daniel did anything wrong? No, Daniel didn't do anything wrong because he loved God and he obeyed God. And so he, he did not do things that were wrong. He didn't break the laws. So the three friends decided to be really tricky and sneaky. They went to the king and they said, Oh, king, we think you should make a new law. And this new law should say that no one is allowed to pray to God. They can only pray to the king. Well, can you pray to a person? No, that doesn't even make any sense. But that's what they told the king. No one should be allowed to pray to God anymore. And the king was not thinking very clearly. And he said, that sounds like a good law. And he made that the law. So now it was against the law to pray to God. What do you think Daniel was going to do? Would he obey the king and stop praying to God? Stop talking to God? Or would he obey God and keep praying? Daniel decided to obey God. So he still went to his house three times every day to pray. Can we count to three again? One, two, three. And three times every day, Daniel knelt down and he prayed to God. And I bet he had a lot of things to talk to God about when it was hard to live in Babylon. And so the other helpers and advisors who were being sneaky and tricky, they watched with their eyes and they saw Daniel praying to God. And so they came back to the king and they said, King Darius, King Darius, guess what? Daniel is praying to God. King Darius was sad because remember how much he liked Daniel because God had made Daniel very wise. But he knew that he had to punish Daniel for breaking the king's law about not praying to God. So the punishment for Daniel was that he would be thrown in a den full of, can you guess what? Lions. Remember lions? Roar. So get out your lion puppet, get it on your hand, and give me a great big roar. Roar. So Daniel was thrown in this den. It's like a big pit, a big hole in the ground with a bunch of hungry lions. You can see him in this picture. There's Daniel in the middle and all the lions. Now these lions would have been hungry lions. You know what a hungry lion does when a man comes by them? A hungry lion would eat the man. Lions don't always eat people, but when, when they're really hungry, then they might. So he was thrown in the lion's den and he had to spend the whole night there. And do you think he was maybe a little bit afraid? And what do you think Daniel did when he was in the lion's den? I bet the first thing he did would have been to pray and to ask God, please save me. And guess what? What do you think God did? God sent an angel down to the lions and he shut the lion's mouths so that they couldn't eat him. So Daniel was down in the lion's den praying. The lions couldn't eat him. So they just had to sit there all night long looking at Daniel and Daniel was safe because God rescued Daniel. Now when morning came and everyone woke up, can you stretch? <sighs> Wake up. All these people woke up. King Darius, I don't think he slept all night. He was worried about Daniel. So he ran to the lion's den and he called out, Daniel, are you still alive? And guess what Daniel, Daniel was in there and he said, yes, King Darius, I am alive. God has saved me. And King Darius told Daniel that he could come out of the lion's den so that he wouldn't have to be in danger anymore from the lions. Isn't that an amazing story? We can see in this picture, this is when the king came, King Darius, to see if Daniel was alive. And there he was. Daniel was alive. He was fine. The lions hadn't hurt him at all. There are the lions and they're, all their mouths are closed. Because remember, the angel from God came down to close the lion's mouths. 
And King Darius and all the people learned, again, just like in the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that God is the most powerful. And not only is God the only one we should worship, God is the only one we should pray to. And um, this story also reminds us of Jesus. And Jesus saves us, not from lions that could hurt our bodies, but from sin and death that can hurt our souls. Because sin, when we disobey, when we don't follow God, that would separate us <clears throat> from, from God forever. And so instead of only being hurt in our bodies, we would be hurt in our souls. Because if we're not with God, then we don't have any joy or any happiness or any good thing. God is the source of all good things. And so when Jesus came to die on the cross, he took away all our sins for us so that we can be protected from sin and from death. And um, that's even greater than how God protected Daniel. So this amazing, strong, powerful God who could save Daniel from the lions, he wants to save you from your sins. He wants to save you from death so that you will be able to live with God forever and ever. Isn't that amazing? So I want to take a moment here to pray for all of you kids, to thank God for um, saving Daniel and to thank God for saving us from an even scarier fate than lions to save us from sin and death. So let's pray. Can you fold your hands with me and close your eyes and let your hearts pray with, with me while I say the words? Dear God, we thank you that you are a God who is strong and mighty to save. We thank you for saving Daniel from the scary, powerful lions. We thank you that you are more powerful than anything. And we thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross so that we can be saved from sin, from the power of sin, from our enemy, the devil, and from death, from not just physical death in our bodies, but spiritual death in our souls. We thank you that you want to save us so that we can live with you forever. I pray that every child listening to this story would know how powerful you are and know how much you love them. And I pray that they would trust you to take away their sin, that they would be able to live with you forever. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, that I pray. Amen. All right, what a great story we've had. I want to review our key song again, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, because Jesus is our best friend by saving us not only from lions and from um, physical hurt, but from spiritual hurt by taking away our sins. So let's sing this song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. We remember that prayer was so important to Daniel. He, he had to disobey King Darius in order to keep praying to God. And he loved God that much that he would do that. God says in the Bible to pray without ceasing. That's from our key verse in 1 Thessalonians. That's what Daniel did. Remember how he prayed three times every day? Let's count to three again. One, two, three. And God wants us to pray all day long, whether we're happy or sad or scared or um, lonely or uh, angry. No matter how we're feeling, God wants us to talk to him and tell him how we feel. So let's practice our key verse together from 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, and 18. Can you say the words with me? Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. Now, one more thing you should have gotten in the mail this week are these little prayer prompt cards. And so I want to help you kids um, to think of things that you can pray to God about, just like Daniel prayed so many times during the day. So you've got some ideas on here. Um, like, dear God, I'm so glad you helped me with, and then there's a blank spot and you can, you can fill out something that God has helped you with. Maybe he helped you to be kind to your brother or sister. Maybe he helped you um, to go to sleep without being afraid. And then we have some other ones like, I'm sorry, God, for things that you've done wrong, um, like disobeying your parents or being angry. Or I love you, God, because... And there's so many reasons why we love God. He loves us. That's the, one of the main reasons he sent Jesus to save us. So there are a bunch of different ideas in here. And if you haven't had a chance to go through these yet, I want you to ask a parent to help you. And you can go through and maybe take one a day or you can do them all at once. 
and think of different things that you can pray to God about. Um, and when you're done, if you have a stapler, you can staple them into a little book so that you can remember. Um, and I just want to encourage you kids to talk to God as much as you can, because God loves to hear you. He loves you. He wants to know how you're feeling. And the more that you talk to God and pray to God, the more that he will give you, like he gave Daniel, wisdom and strength to be able to obey. I'm sure it was scary for Daniel to obey, but because he prayed, God gave him the strength to obey. And that's what I want for you kids too. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. We've had a great story. Um, I hope you kids are doing well at home. I love you. And come back next week and we'll hear another story about how God is the greatest king in the whole world. Bye-bye.